What's going on guys? It's the Bulls and the Bears and today we have an educational video going over cash account versus a margin account. What are they? What are the differences and what should you be using? This video is part of my educational video playlist. So there's more there if you want to check them out. And I'm also taking requests. So if you have any ideas that I don't already have a video on that you'd like me to touch on, leave a comment down below. And without further ado, let's get into this. So when it comes to the cash account versus a margin account, we're going to start with the cash account first because it's the simplest, easy to explain, and then I can throw on the added layers for the margin account. So a cash account, great for new traders and for small accounts. So if you're pretty new and you have a small account, maybe a couple thousand dollars or less, a cash account is going to be uh, better for you. And that'll make more sense later when I talk about the margin account. It's basic and straightforward which is why it's good for new traders, but it has its limits. When you're buying shares or options, you either have the cash or you don't. And when you're selling, you either have the security, shares or options or whatever, or you don't. You can't, you know, it's black and white. You either have it or you don't. And if you don't have it, you can't do it. If you have $5,000 in your cash account and you want to buy 100 shares of Apple, I mean, that's going to cost you $15,000. You only have five. You can't do it. Plain and simple. If you want to short a stock, well, you can't do it because selling to open is how you short. And if you don't have the shares to sell, if you don't have the security to sell, then you're, you're not selling anything. You can't do it. You're limited to just buying with cash and selling the securities you already bought. And that's it. Makes sense. Good for new traders. Uh, it doesn't have to be more complicated than that. I mean, a lot of people can be very successful with cash accounts because you don't really need to get too fancy. Um, but... There are important things that you have to realize, and that's the settlement rules. This is something that new traders often don't realize or maybe don't understand either when, when they might hear someone say it. You have to understand the logistics behind what actually happens behind the scenes when securities are bought and sold. Like forget about, take your trading hat off, you know, and think about what is actually happening in the business world during these transactions. It's not just out of thin air. There are technically like actual confirms for these trades, actual like physical settlements or probably it's really digital. There used to be physical uh, certificates for, for shares, but now it's pretty much digital. But still, it has to follow the same process. When you buy a stock in your brokerage account, that broker has to pass that transaction through a clearing firm. They have to get the actual shares from you know, another firm that maybe has them available, this and that. And then that those shares go to a custodian, which safe keeps the actual shares. Because all these shares and, and trades, they have to be, there has to be record keeping. There has to be safekeeping of them, like which institution actually has ownership of these shares that you are a beneficiary of or, or a controller of, you know what I mean? All of that takes time to settle. So there's a trade date and a settlement date for every buy and sell. That's what's going on behind the scenes. And with equities, which is, uh, which would be stocks in this case, shares, that takes two days. It's T plus two, you might hear, which is trade date plus two days, business days. So if you buy shares on the 21st, Monday, those technically won't settle until two days later on Wednesday, the 23rd. That is when the shares are actually held by the proper custodian in the proper safekeeping under your control and ownership. That is when that's all finally settled. That's when the person selling the shares or the institution selling the shares to you, that's when they actually get their money. So when you sell something, it also takes two days. If you sell shares, it takes two days to get control of your cash. It's kind of like depositing money into your, your brokerage account. You don't get the access to that money right away. It has to, has to settle. Usually it always says like two, two to five business days to settle. You probably have experience with that outside of trading, just transferring money digitally to maybe different bank accounts. It takes two to five days to settle. Same idea here. It takes two days for uh, trades to settle when you're dealing with shares. So if you have a hundred, if you have five shares of Apple and you sell them, you know, you're going to be getting cash back, but you don't actually get the cash available to use until those two days go by and it officially settles. So that's important because if 
for example, you sell those five shares and you're expecting, let's just say like $2,000. If you're expecting $2,000 back in cash, but you have to wait two days to get it, you can't use that $2,000. So you have to wait the two days before you can officially get your cash back and then trade with it. So that's where it gets tricky with a cash account is understanding um, the settlement days. With stocks, well, I should say shares. With shares, it's two days. With options, it's only one. And that's a great thing because that means the very next day you get all your money back. If you, if you went from selling and, and buying and selling, you get all your money back and your account is, is back to normal, reset, no restrictions the very next day. While with shares, it takes two days. So let's say your account has five grand, it's, it's finally settled and you have your cash ready to go and you want to trade. You buy $5,000 worth, your, your whole entire account, you buy, you put it into Apple, you sell all of it that same day because it's a day trade. You made a profit, maybe 500 bucks, excellent. So now you sold it and your account is at 5,500. However, you sold stock, you sold shares, you bought and then sold them. It takes two days for all that to settle, for your cash to settle into your account before you can use it again. So that means the next day you can't do anything because it takes two days to settle. And we're only talking about the next day. You don't have your cash yet. It's still settling. So you can't trade with it. That's the downside. You're, you're restricted until the, the trades and transactions settle. You can't use that cash again, your account again, until it settles on the second day. So that's the downside. Once you use your cash on any given day, you can't use it again until those transactions settle. What makes options good is it only takes one day. So if you buy $5,000 of Apple options, sell them, make $1,000 profit, now you have $6,000 in your account. You can't trade anymore that day. That's, that's it for the day. You've used up all your cash for that day and you have to wait for it to settle. But luckily it settles the very next day. So the next morning when you wake up and you're ready to go back to trading, you have your cash because options only take one day to settle. So that's, that's why when you're trading with a cash account and you're trading options, it's, pre it's pretty smooth. There's really no, uh, no downside to it. You're limited to the amount of cash you have in your account you know, every, every dollar in your account that you use to buy and sell that day, you can only use it once. So if you have a $5,000 account and you do one trade that uses $1,000, then boom, that's gone. You only have four grand left to trade with. You use $2,000 the next trade, that's gone. Now you only have $2,000 left. You see what I mean? But the next day, if you trade at options, it'll all settle and you'll have your cash back ready to use it. If you trade shares though, that's two days. So trading shares in a cash account, not really worth it. Besides, shares are expensive as it is. So typically, everyone's going to go the options route anyway. But just so you know, if you're trading shares in a cash account, it takes two days to settle. Options is just one. So you get your money right back the very next day with options, and then you have your full account ready to go. But again, you're limited to the amount of money in your account. So once you use your full account of for trading that day, that's it, you're shut off, you can't do anything else. However, the broker likely will allow you to go over your cash balance if you wanna buy something. If you already use all your cash and you don't have any cash technically settled and available to buy something else, the broker oftentimes will allow you to still buy something on good faith. It's called good faith and if you break and if you uh, break the rules on that, it's called a good faith violation, GF, GFV. You may have seen that possibly if you've been doing this. So it'll, they'll be like, all right, you know what? We'll allow you to buy the security because you're getting the cash back tomorrow anyway. So it'll kind of net itself out in the next day. But since this is borrowed funds and we're allowing you to kind of bend the rules, you're not allowed to sell it. You have to hold it to the next day to ensure that the cash will settle and it'll back up that transaction. So they'll, they'll, they'll bend the rules for you that way. And if you do end up selling it, which you can, they won't stop you. But if you do, it'll be a strike on your account. It'll be considered a good faith violation. You broke the rules and every broker's different. I trade with Webull, I've done it before and I've done it multiple times. There's usually, I don't know, they don't, they don't really slap you on the wrist that hard. I mean, they'll be like, hey, 
it's a good faith violation. There have been times where they hit me with that and then literally nothing else happens. No other messages, emails, my account's not restricted, this and that, it's fine. If you do it too often, I think like three times in a row, they'll allow one, but if you do like three times in a row, they, uh, they'll they say that you're not, they won't get, allow you to do the good faith purchase in the future or like until 90 days or something. So if you do use all your cash in the cash account that day, they won't allow you to go over. They won't bend the rules anymore for you. You're completely shut off from that for a certain time. If you continue to do it, they might just straight up cut your account off. I don't know. I haven't done it that much to, to find out, but um, they, they usually will allow you to do it once or twice, maybe three times before they really restrict your account. But that's something to, to note. And I didn't even write it on the slide because I forgot about it and didn't think about it until right now. So good faith violation. And that's really about it for cash account. It's pretty straightforward. Once you understand the settlement rules and what kind of limitation that provides, it's, it's really simple and smooth and basic. It's really good for options, not really good for, for stocks and shares, I should say, because obviously shares are more expensive to buy. And then you have that two-day settlement options. You can trade with little amount of money, make a solid amount of money, and you get the cash right back the next day. But you can't do anything extra than that. You can't buy more than the cash you have. You can't short sell. You can't go short on anything. And you can't do like particular option strategies, option selling strategies, option buying strategies like spreads. So there are limits, but if you're just day trading options, buying options, and then selling them for profit, then cash account is fine. Way to go. Let's go see what the margin account is like. Margin account. Great for experienced traders and large accounts. It's not so basic and not so straightforward as a cash account, but it offers a lot more, such as the things I was saying, short selling, option selling strategies, uh, leverage, unlimited trading. So we'll get into it, we'll break all those down. But when it, with a margin account, you get what's called margin, which is a feature that allows the trader, that's you, to borrow from the broker. So if you're short selling, if you want to short a stock, you're effectively borrowing shares from your broker because you don't own them. You don't have shares to sell. So you have to borrow them. They don't just come out of thin air. You borrow them from the broker and you sell them and you that's how you open your position you, with the intent to buy them back and make the broker whole. You can't do that in a cash account, but a margin account allows you to borrow. And with short selling, you're borrowing the shares. Buying, you can borrow money to buy more than your cash would allow. So if you have $5,000 in your account, just like the cash account example, your broker might allow you to buy $10,000 worth of securities. So you're borrowing an extra five grand to you know, load up on a position. Every broker has their own rules though. There are account minimums for leverage access, leverage slash margin, kind of the same, kind of interchangeable words there. Um, stocks available for short selling can be different on different platforms. So a, a stock that's available to short on Lightspeed might not be available on Webull because every broker is different with that. The leverage multiple allowed on a certain stock can be different. So it's not just you get 4X leverage on every trade. At least not every broker is that way. Sometimes it depends on the stock. There's, there's margin or leverage restrictions depending on the stock. A highly traded liquid asset like Apple or Tesla, they'll likely they'll likely give you full leverage, which a lot of times is four times leverage. So whatever you have in cash times four is how much you're able to buy. On less liquid stocks, less popular stocks, they might restrict that to only two times leverage. They won't allow you to buy four times the amount of cash you have. They'll only allow you two times. And then there are some that won't allow it at all. Some stocks... The broker won't allow you to use leverage at all on, on some stocks, in which case you can only buy up to the amount of cash you have. So that's important to note. If you are getting fancy with that and loading up on positions, make sure to check the stock. Every broker should have some type of symbol or indicator showing you how much margin would be allowed on that particular stock. And then, of course, the big elephant in the room, PDT, Pattern Day Trader. It's the ultimate barrier to entry with margin accounts. Because what I was saying earlier, right here, unlimited trading, that is a feature of a margin account. 
to where you can trade as much as you want. As long as you have money in your account, you can trade as much as you want. Unlike a cash account, I said the cash account, you can only trade up to the dollar amount that you have. And once you've used all your dollars in your account, it's locked up and you have to wait for that cash to settle before you can use it again. The margin account, it allows you to borrow. Margin, a feature allows you to borrow. So even though behind the scenes, technically, the cash hasn't really settled yet and the trades haven't really settled yet, because that's still true, the margin account allows you to basically borrow from the broker and say, even though the cash hasn't settled yet, you're still going to allow me to trade on borrowed funds is essentially what it is. Now, this isn't a loan. You wouldn't be charged interest on it. It just allows you to continue to trade even if you've, you know, technically the cash hasn't all settled yet. So that's a nice feature with the margin account. You can just trade as long as you want, as much as you want in a given day, um, as long as you have, you know, as long as the account's not zero. But this feature, this unlimited trading feature is only available if you're above the PDT level of $25,000. That's a very big number. So PDT again is pattern day trader. Pattern day trader is a assignment or a designation given to those who trade more than three day trades in a five day rolling period. Now three day trades, I mean, that's nothing in five days. Like you, you do three more than three every day and all you get is three within five days. That's kind of crazy. And yeah, it is crazy. That's why margin accounts aren't really good for those with an account size less than 25,000 because you only get three day trades within a five day rolling period. Meaning the five day rolling period, I'll have to spell that out in an example. So you only get three. Okay, so let's say it's Monday and you use one day trade on Monday. You don't get that back until five days from then. And it's, it's per, it's per day trade. So you don't get that back until the next Monday, five business days later. Let's say that's the only trade you do. And then on Tuesday, you do another day trade. You don't get that Tuesday day trade back until the next Tuesday, five days later. And then again, on Wednesday, you use your third day trade. You don't get that back until five days later on Wednesday. So on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you use one day trade each, you use all three, and now you have none left. Next week comes, next Monday comes, you got your day trade back from the prior Monday, but that's all you got. You only have that one day trade available because the other two don't come back to you until Tuesday and then Wednesday. That's the five day rolling period. It's not, it's not, um, you can only do three day trades within five days. It's not Monday through Friday, you get three, and then Monday through Friday, next week, you get three. Um, whenever you want. No, you have to wait five days after each day trade. And if you don't do them all at one, in one day, then you get, you will get them back on like a staggered basis. So you get one back on the next Monday, another one back on Tuesday, another one back on Wednesday. And that's a major restriction. If you're an active day trader, then this is a straight up deal breaker. There's no way you can work around this. There are other approaches. If you're doing a more passive approach, or maybe you're doing like a, uh, a dividend strategy type thing where you want to access to that extra money, that extra leverage, but you're not necessarily an active trader, then I guess that that'll work. Or maybe you could even use it as a way to kind of restrict yourself. And maybe you have a, a habit of over trading and you just want to say, no, I want to do one good trade a day. And I want to do that every other day. Then you could use this as a, as this kind of a, a forced restriction on yourself to where you're only limited to three trades you know, within a five day period, then that's one way to, about it too. But other than that, this is a deal breaker. So that's a major feature. You need 25 K or more to get access to unlimited trading, but everything else, short selling option strategies, like spreads, credit spreads, vertical spreads, iron condors, iron butterflies, calendar spreads, all of that, all those different strategy option strategies that's allowed. Now you can only, if you don't have 25 K, you know, you can only do three day trades, but you can still do them. You can't do that in a cash account. You could even do naked options, selling naked options, naked calls, naked puts. Now you need certain options trading level to do these things. You have to get approved for options level two, options level three, options level four. So they all, they all have their own restrictions, but a margin account allows for all that to take place. If you, if you really wanted to. 
And then of course, if you have over $25,000, and um, then it's okay to be a pattern day trader because you're a pattern day trader either way. I just want to make that clear. Pattern day trader is just an assignment to someone who trades actively. PDT isn't necessarily 25,000. It's just a, a, an assignment to anyone who trades a lot. Um, it's just that if you have over 25K, you're a pattern day trader, but it's okay. It's just, it's government regulation. That's what it is. They did it to quote unquote, protect us traders from getting in over our heads, I guess, you know? So whatever, you know, it's pretty annoying, but it's a US thing and um, that is, it is what it is. So that's the margin account. It is important to note that if you are using that margin feature that allows you to borrow from the trader, and if you're buying, that means you're using more money than you actually have in cash. And if you're short selling, that just means you're borrowing shares. So the whole short position is technically borrowed. You do have to pay interest on that. If you hold it more than a day, if they don't get their money or their shares back that same day, and you hold on to it for a day or a week, a month, you have to pay interest. Now that's fine. You know, that's not against the rules, but just know that there will be interest to be paid because you're borrowing money that's not yours and they want interest on that. If you hold a position for five days with money that's not yours, you gotta pay five days worth of interest. Might not add up to much if you only hold it for a day or two, but just be aware that that's the case. Your broker should tell you what those interest rates are and uh, so that way you won't be surprised. So what should you use? Well, to this point, you probably already know which one fits, fits you best. But as a rule of thumb, you got to think about that pattern day trader uh, connotation and the rule behind it. If your account is below 25,000, you're likely better off with a cash account and trading options. Usually if your account's over 25,000, you can do whatever. I mean, margin account would work. You can, you get every feature from a margin account. If you're over 25 K, no restrictions, no nothing, but you don't have to, you can still use a cash account with 25 K or more. There's, there's no reason to, uh, to really move to a, a margin account if you don't need to. Because like I said, if you're just trading options daily, the settlement's not gonna kill you. You know, you get your money back the very next day, so you can, you're, you're fresh every morning to, to trade. So that's perfect. There's no problem there. It doesn't matter how big your account is, as long as you have enough capital to trade a single day's worth of options, then you can stick with the cash account, that's fine. But if you do want to trade shares, for example, and you want access to that additional um, borrowed money to buy more shares than you have the cash for, then margin account is for you. Another thing to note is that brokers, I'm pretty sure across the board, at least from my experience, do not allow margin for options. So if you're an options trader, having that access to borrowed money from the broker isn't actually useful because you can't do that. You can't use two times your cash value to buy options. They won't allow that. They'll only allow you to buy options up to the amount of cash you have in your account. So you won't be getting that feature if you, if you use a margin account for options, but you do have the ability to trade as much as you want with the options. You don't have to worry about, oh, I, I used up all my cash to trade I have to wait for tomorrow for it to settle. No, you don't have to worry about settlements, cash settlements with margin accounts. So you can trade as much as you want. You can trade your full account in every position five times a day. It doesn't matter. Can't do that with a cash account. But just so you know, you can't use margin or leverage, I should say, with options. So that's it, guys. I hope that made sense. I hope you know now what each one is, what each account is and which one's best for you. I really hope I didn't miss anything. I usually find out when I'm editing and it's too late. So hope all is well there. Um, again, if you have any ideas or suggestions for new educational videos down the road, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you guys have questions about. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to check out the rest of my videos. I post regularly. I, I trade the wheel option strategy, which is an option selling strategy. And in my videos, I give you midweek updates, weekly recaps, and I just bring you along the journey of me trading the wheel strategy, which is a pretty conservative, passive, consistent approach to the market. So if you're interested in that, check those videos out, follow me along with my journey. I guess that's really it. So thanks guys for watching. If you enjoyed, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you all next time.